All right, welcome back. Thanks again for supporting my channel. We're getting back into some Dorico stuff in this video. And what I want to talk about is dynamics, which I've talked about a lot uh, before, but it's so essential that when you're writing music in Dorico that you can interact with your sample libraries to get dynamic and expressive performances back. And when you're working in notation, it's a little more... Um, I suppose, conducive to the workflow if your notated um, dynamics are, are what you hear. So if you notate something as pianissimo versus piano versus forte, what does that really mean? Now, if you're recording in a DAW, you might just record um, uh, MIDI CCs for expression or dynamics, and you can do that in Dorico. Um, for my, uh, well, that's totally an option. That's not what this video is about. This video is really about if you want to notate your dynamics and you want to make sure that you're getting the result you expect, you're going to know by the end of this video exactly how to measure that and exactly how to set it up. And I'm going to share with you my preferred settings. So let's take a look at this example here. And I'm starting in pianissimo. Now, that's not pianissimo uh, for my money. <laughs> that's too loud. So I'm going to go to um, my uh, playback settings, playback options, all right, which is Shift Command P on a Mac, I guess Shift Control P. I'm going to go to dynamics and I'm going to look at this the dynamic curve power, the uh, minimum dynamic level, maximum dynamic level all of that sort of stuff down here. And I'm gonna explain a little bit about how to work with this stuff. Okay, so first of all, we wanna make sure, we wanna look at, is this even registering as pianissimo in my expression map? To do that, I have to go to play, and I have to go to my expression map. I can see I don't even have one selected. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna use default and for natural, I want to make sure that control change one uh, has a full range from one to 127. That's my primary volume. I'm going to ignore note velocity entirely. And I'm going to choose, um, I'm always going to want the secondary, and the secondary is going to be expression or CC11, again with full range. That's the default value uh, for the default expression map. Come over here and choose it right here. Now when I go back and play, oh, now it's a lot quieter. So if I make this piano and I make this uh, mezzo forte, now we should get a real range. Okay, so that's working perfectly. But what is it actually doing? So in order to figure out what it's actually doing, we need to open up the lower area here and go to MIDI. Click the little MIDI key editor button there. I'm going to bring this up just so that we can see more of what we're looking at. And we want to look in this kind of controller lane down here. Velocity is irrelevant to us because we're using an expression map that ignores velocity. We're going to go to dynamics and we're going to see this gray line. And the point, each point is written where I entered an actual dynamic. And you can see when I select that point down in the dynamics lane, it selects the related dynamic up here. So this is pianissimo, this is piano and mezzo forte. And you can actually see how it took takes like a, a, it's not a graded ramped approach, it's a step, right? You can actually, I think in some situations, maybe change that. Um, maybe if we were to do something like this, where we did, uh, you know, mezzo forte up to forte, something like that, then you get a ramp down here because you're using one of these uh, hairpin sort of crescendo type things, right? Let's undo that for the time being. 
And let's just take a look here at what pianissimo is. So when I mouse over this right here, what I want to actually look at, you'll notice that I can't really figure out what number that is. It says it's minus two. <laughs> what is minus two? All right, this is minus one. What the heck does that mean? This is one. I guess this middle line is zero. What does that even mean? All right, well, what it means is if we go back into our playback options, these two numbers here, minimum dynamic level and maximum dynamic level, this is what it means. So there's a range of six plus to minus six, and you can see in their little graphic here, six Ps, you know, P and E, C, 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 Mo, to four T, C, 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 Mo, six Fs, six Ps, I don't do that. Um, I might have uh, double P, pianissimo, and double forte for fortissimo, triple F, triple P, uh, six and five P's and F's. It doesn't make a lot of sense to me. So um, what I'm going to do ultimately is I'm going to change these values to something more narrow. But it's important to understand what this does. So basically, this is a way of scaling the very quietest to the very loudest, which is always going to be a MIDI value between uh, 0 and 127. It's deciding, is that 0 to 127 range going to cover a dynamic range of 12, 6 plus 6? Or, you know, if I set these each to, you know, 2 and minus 2, then it would be a dynamic range of 4 divided by 127 steps. That's what those numbers do. Um, but let's get a little more granular information before we make any changes. So here we can see where the points are, and we can, um, unfortunately, though, not really understand very much about well, what CC is being sent to my instrument. So to do the latter, I'm going to go to CC1. I'm actually going to add, oops, I'm actually going to add editors here. So I'm going to add an editor for CC1 and CC11. The reason for this, for adding them both, is so you can see something very important, which is that there's a gray line being drawn in for CC1 and CC11. And that is because back in my expression map, I said, I told Dorico specifically that I wanted to use CC1 for my volume dynamic primary and CC11 for my secondary dynamic. Because I chose 11 and 1 here, I now have 11 and 1 over here in my lanes. And they have gray lines, which m kind of approximate what's going on here. Now, there obviously, there's a lot of other steps. And this is where things get tricky, because it's like, OK, well, what's going on? I said pianissimo. It apparently is crescendoing up uh, to piano, but then even though piano ultimately is going to mezzo forte, which is a louder dynamic, there's like this stepping down. What's going on? Well, we're going to get all into that. Um, but here is where you can, in the CC lanes, is where you can actually get a MIDI CC number. You can see how that says 27, right? 32, 38. So that's telling me actually, that is actually the CC value. It's sending MIDI CC 11 value 26 to my instrument. MIDI CC 1 value 26 or 27, I'm not sure which, to my instrument. So that's the value of looking at, at these. Now, you can always um, switch to the pencil tool, and you can override this. And basically, that's saying, follow the dynamic guide is the gray line. That's the default, but I drew in some of my own stuff, and I want you to do that at those particular junctures. And you can see them highlighted in blue, and you can just undo those or delete them if you want to go back to, uh, back to the regular. Okay? So, let's see now. What's the next step? The next step, now that we understand how to interpret what these values are, is to sculpt them to our purposes. Now, generally, I like to stick with a more traditional range, which is double P to double F. 
double P being uh, very, 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 very quiet, and double F being the loudest you can possibly go. I don't need six P's and six F's. Whether you want them is completely up to you, but that's not, that's not my style. So I'm going to go back here, and I'm going to change my minimum dynamic level to minus two. That would be uh, basically double P. And then I'm going to change this to two, which would be double F. Now when I hit apply, some changes are going to happen over here. And the main change is that now pianissimo represents zero, basically silent. That's a bit heavy handed. I don't want P, I want pianissimo to be quiet, but not silent. So I'm going to go back here. I'm actually going to say that my minimum dynamic level is three. So three P's, triple P's will be silent, but double P's will be pianissimo. It'll be audible, but still quiet. Okay. So now I can see that um, pianissimo is now 12. Uh, piano is now um, 98, I guess. And uh, mezzo forte is 110. That doesn't make any sense, right? Pianissimo to mezzo forte should be a much bigger range. But also what's going on with this like up and down. That's This is a straight line. This is clearly not what is going on there. That is due to something, uh, some cool stuff built into Dorico, but that sometimes you actually want to turn off. So I'm going to turn this off right here. It's called Pitch Contour Emphasis. And Pitch Contour Emphasis means that as your notes go up, generally a player plays them with more dynamics. As they go down, they play them with less dynamics. If we turn that off and hit apply, you can start to see these lines evened out a whole lot. Let's just take another look at that. So with this applied pitch emphasis on, you can see how much it's changing those CC11 and CC1 values from what uh, I intended. I only wrote three PP, P, and mezzo forte, and I got this crazy range. Anyway, turn off pitch contour emphasis. It's designed to do a little bit of what Note Performer does. All of these settings actually are designed to kind of do what Note Performer does, which is uh, to humanize the playback. And it's effective, but it does mean that the um, you can always turn these back on if you want, you know, I guess. I'm going to turn these also to zero. This is the humanize uh, written dynamic. So this is basically saying, um, do you should we kind of randomize the dynamic, or should we stay strictly on bar? Now, so now, uh, I guess I think this was at five, and this is at twenty or something. If we hit apply, go back, you see there's like little steps in here, and if we turn this to zero and zero, and we hit apply we get a straighter line. So that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for a straight line, so a baseline, right? I, I want a baseline. Um, I generally find leaving this reset dynamic level, that doesn't have a big impact. Let's hit apply. Didn't really have a big impact. I'm gonna leave it on since it's a default. But I do find that these use automatic polyphonic instrument voice balancing, that these do have a difference. So you can see that well, I guess in this case, it's not making much of a difference, but I have seen that make a difference in the past. Down here in Note Dynamics, this is actually, it's going to emphasize uh, downbeats. Um, you can change that. So you can see how, like, each of the first notes here in the measure, the first note is emphasized, and that has to do with beat stress. If I were to bring this down to zero and hit apply, you can see that that beat stress is taken off. So I'm going to go back. I'm going to leave that on but because now we know what it's doing, right? We know why it's there. And that's not a bad idea for playback. It might, it might make it sound a little better. Anyway, what I've got now is that if I were to say this dynamic up here was P and, uh, triple P, I'm going to go shift D and I'm going to type in PPP. That's going to mean PPP, it's zero, it's silent. So check this out, if I play back, totally silent until we get to piano. But I'm gonna go ahead on this, on beat two, I am going to shift D and turn it to pianissimo. And you can see now 
the dynamics have gone up a little bit. So now we're going to have silence for the fir first four eighths and pianissimo. Perfect. Now, if I wanted to get even more granular here, I could say make this into um, mezzo piano. That's mezzo forte. I'm going to make this forte and then... Uh, turn that into fortissimo. That's my loudest. So now we can see that at fortissimo, its value is 127, and at triple P, the value is zero, and that is because of these values I selected right here. Minus three means I have room for triple P is is silent, double P is going to be um, audible, but here, fortissimo, two Fs, is the maximum loudness. This can be 127 is the volume. And I've turned off the humanization effectively, turned off the pitch contour emphasis, turned off the polyphonic instrument voice balancing, um, and I'm aware that there are accents happening. Uh, you know, this is where you could say, well, when I accent a note, um, it increases its written dynamic by 0.5. You can see that if I were to take this note here, well, actually, I'll take this note here, and I'm going to put an accent on it. And what you'll notice right here is that this area here, the dynamic value will go up. Not here, because it's still marked as piano, but here um, in the background, it's going to change it. So, boom, there it goes. So it raised it quite a bit. Um, this also is a good way for you to just understand how much these other dynamic markings like accent mean. Um, when I started this video, I was really focused on just kind of these written dynamics, you know, double P, piano, mezzo piano. What do these actually mean? And getting to the bottom of that. But um, it's also relevant to things like the accents and you hit Command Shift P and you come to this dynamics area. You go down here, you can decide what does Marcato do, um, bracketed note heads, um, different kinds of note dynamics on beat stress. Um, all of those things are, are useful. And if, if you want to turn on the humanization here and you want to use pitch contour emphasis, you can see that it changes things dramatically over here, but maybe that's what you want. That's cool. Just know why it's doing that. Um, so that's the main thing I wanted to talk about was why is it doing it? How can you actually get like metrics on it? How can you measure what your pianissimo is? Now, I hope that down the road, Dorico has a more streamlined system. I have seen evidence in the forum that, uh, that the developers behind it are looking to really maybe build this into an expression map where you'd say, you know, legato um, piano would have this CC value. Um, Marcato would have this CC value for 11, this CC value for one. And you can do that in Cubase currently. You can go through um, on, a, on, a, on an expression map in Cubase. You can go into those expression maps and you can say, you know, each articulation has a specific value for each of the specific dynamics. It's extremely granular. It takes time to set up, but can make your uh, mock-ups way, way, way more realistic. So uh, I'm hopeful that Dorico and their development team will get around to it. I love those folks. They do great, great work. I love Dorico. Um, every time they release an update, things get better. Hopefully this will be one of the things that they get around to soon. Um, but now you know exactly how it works, how you can measure it. If you have any questions, please put it in the comments. And I really appreciate it if you like and subscribe. If you found the video helpful, you'll find out every time I put out a new video. And it also helps me surface these videos to the larger YouTube environment. I'm trying to get my channel up to help, me, help support me a little bit more in uh in the work that i do putting these videos together so i appreciate your support watching and subscribing and liking the videos 
Thanks again, and I will see you next time. All right, bye.